so the next thing on our agenda is to look at having two totally separate sites. And someone made a good point last time um, when talking about this, because the discussion came up something to the effect of, um, you know, um, reason to do something one way or the other. Uh, and, and if you remember, I said at some point the choice kind of becomes, do I want to have one complicated set of pages or two relatively simple set of pages? And at that point, someone raised the point of, it also depends like on who you have working on the project, all right? There's so many factors that influence a given project in the real world, all right? Um, could be the, the availability of the people working on it. You might not have anyone with mobile development uh, on your staff, so you contract it out to a consultant. And it might be easier to just make a separate site then, as opposed to having them muddy the water. You may be perfectly happy with your current site for the desktop and don't even want to mess with that. So you have people do that. So again, so many factors come into play. The expertise of the people involved, um, what has happened historically with the site, and, and all these things in addition to the basic, like, is it a good idea to do this versus that discussion comes in. So that's why when we talk about these things, we talk about these things and we try to make you familiar with the set of these tools, um, knowing that in real life situations you're going to mix and match them and you're going to find what works for your particular situation. All right. The one thing I think I alluded to as well is some of the, um, some of the responsive techniques we're still going to apply. Why? Well, because A, that's just a good way to code a web page to make it responsive to the size of the screen. If all we're doing is differentiating between mobile and desktop, well, there's still quite a range of things that are mobile devices, all right? And therefore, to have things conform to the size of the screen is a good idea, just like there's a whole bunch of different sizes for, and resolutions on monitors. So it's a good idea to have it conform to that. So keep in mind that as we do these things, you know, it's not as though one is replacing the other. It's that we look at all these tools, depending on the situation, and depending on the exact nature of the project, we pick the mix of tools that we feel will give us the best result. You do have a quiz scheduled for this week. What will happen is it, it's just a short quiz. It's like three or four questions. Uh, it will be online. It won't be coding. It will be more conceptual. So it will be short answer, short essay type questions. So that I, I will post that um, um, the end of this week, like Thursday of this week. Oh, so we do that on our own time? You do it on your own timeline, yeah. It won't be timed or anything. If it's timed, it's very loosely timed. So like maybe like you'll have an hour to do three questions or something. Oh. Should have plenty of time to do it, though. Um, all right. On to discussion of redirecting to two separate pages. I assume we all have the concept down and we all have all that down. We just need to get into the, the mechanics of it. Now, what of course is likely going to be our concern here? What's likely going to be our concern here is that if we're making a separate site, even if we are, let me, let me rephrase it, even if we are making a separate site, there's, there's likely to be stuff that is going to be in common between the two sites. All right? There's likely to be a set of links that are on both the mobile and the desktop version. There might be more links on the mobile. Oh, I'm sorry, more links on the desktop. There may be some different links, all right? But there's probably going to be a set of common links. There's probably going to be a set of common style rules as far as using a certain font and all that, all right? Of course, we know responsive techniques for that. If, for example, we have news stories, you know, let's imagine like a, a, a news site that has a list of articles or news stories. Um, we certainly wouldn't want those news stories to be twice, you know, to have two copies of them. And in fact, you might say, well, that's likely to be stored in a database. That's true, but we still wouldn't want the code to retrieve those things from the database to exist twice. All right? We don't want to duplicate our effort, all right, even if we go to a website that has um, 
two versions of it, a mobile and a desktop. It's, you know, by definition, it's going to be more than if you were doing one website, right? Because you're doing two websites. However, we don't want it to be twice as hard. We want to do some things to sort of leverage our skills as developers and adopt some good practices that will make it so that we're not literally duplicating chunks of code, that we have a place where code that lives, that, that is in common between the two sites lives. And that's what we're going to explore today. First, the mechanics of redirecting it to a different site, and then um, what we can do to sort of mitigate the potential issue that, hey, we got two pages uh, with the same stuff on it. I don't want that twice because, again, if I have to change it, I have to change it in two places. All right, let me start by downloading what we had last time. just because it has a snippet of code in it that I want. So I'll download that. with the permission problems again. Excellent. to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to make a index page who's going to be the traffic cop, who's going to be responsible for redirecting stuff. Okay? <coughs> and we'll do this a couple different ways as far as organizing it with folders and stuff. We'll do a, a, a simple, straightforward way, and then, then we'll, we'll take a step back to sort of think about it and, and see how we can improve it. All right. So let's edit this guy. If you notice up here, we have the logic <coughs> that looks at and determines whether we have a mobile site <coughs> or a desktop site. Now in this case, it's simply setting a variable. If you recall last time, we had uh, a case where we had our server-side code be responsive so that if it knew that we were on a mobile site, it did one thing. If it knew that we were on, not on a mobile site, it did something else. All right. So we set that variable, and through our code, we tested, and we checked, and we did different things depending on whether it was a desktop or mobile. Here, we're going to redirect the user to a separate page if it's mobile. All right. So, what's the syntax to redirect a page? Well, I don't know. Let's look it up. This is the instruction that does it. It says it gives an error, but we'll explain why it gives an error in a second. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and redirect this, if it's mobile, to mobile.php. So I'm going to have two pages here. I'm going to have an index page, which is going to be the index for the desktop, and it's also going to be the mobile page. Um, or it's also going to redirect to the mobile page. So it'll be the home page that you get if you're on a desktop, and it will be the page that redirects you to the mobile page if you're running mobile. So let's go in, and I'm going to put some very simple HTML here. I'm going to do the same thing logic and I'm going to change this to say mobile and change this to say mobile as well. Now I have these two pages. One is the index.php and one is mobile.php. Everyone is going to get sent to index.php. That will be the website's default home page. When you configure a web server, you can set up what gets to be the default page. So in other words, if, if you type in www.google.com, you don't specify a web page, but yet a web page appears, right? Why is that? Well, in the configuration of the server, you, uh, they designate what page is the default page for each folder. You can do it to the folder level, actually. But you can specify when people access this folder, if they don't supply a URL, if they don't supply rather a page part of the URL, this is a page they go to. So in our example, uh, and again, I don't know what it will let me do without permissions, but in our example, um, we're going to assume that the home page is index.php. I'll try to get in and configure it um, later on um, after I do this test. So everyone's going to go to index.php. That's going to be the default page for our web server. The first chunk of code in that, though, is going to examine to see if the user is in uh, using a mobile device or using a desktop browser. Remember, we had this big, giant 2,000 characters worth of if statement that's either true or false. If it's true, it means that they're on a mobile browser. If it's false, it means that they're on a desktop browser. So the only thing we have here is we have the true part of it. So, if it's true, we're going to redirect them. The way you redirect in PHP is you actually 
update the request header. In other words, you sort of alter the request that came in from the client. So the client asked for index.php. We're going to change that and say, now send to mobile.php. But we're only going to do that if they're on a mobile device. If they're not on a mobile device, we simply go on our merry way and they get the desktop version. All right? Now this needs to be, the redirection needs to be, needs to occur before we have sent anything to the client. In other words, you can't start sending a web page to a client and then change your mind and say, I want to redirect them somewhere else. So the upshoot of that is I could not do this. Because the server will have already sent a chunk of code to the browser, right? Any of this HTML that exists out of PHP gets sent to the browser. Therefore, we can't send something to the browser and then redirect. So that rewriting of the header has to be like right off the bat. So it's in a block of PHP that exists prior to us sending anything to the client. All right. So let's save this. Let's save the mobile. So yeah. you can always start a PHP. Like it always is pretty much a PHP page is going to start with the PHP code first. Or it's necessarily have to. Not, not all PHP pages. PHP pages that are responsible for redirecting to another page, we'll definitely need that PHP right, right, block right, at the top. Um, typically, the way I do it, yeah, most of my PHP things, because there's some like initialization that you perform. Right. Yeah, that's what so, I'm so it's not like a requirement. You wouldn't get confused about like if, if it read HTML first and then it would be fine. Yeah. It would not get confused as long as you had the PHP code before you you started to like use the variables in the PHP gotcha. code. The only real issue, again, is in this case when you're redirecting. Oh, yeah, when yeah. we're redirecting, then that, that is no, a that cut part. and dried rule. That was more of a general question. Okay. All right, so let's go and let's copy this to our web server's root directory, which is cinetpub ww root. I'm going to get rid of everything that's in there now so as to not confuse me. And then I'll copy these guys in. Oops. All right, so we have these. So now, I go in my browser, and I type in localhost, which is my domain, if you will. It's the web server that I'm hitting. If this were out on the web, this would be www.myurl.com or whatever. And then I type in index.php. And sure enough, it stays on the desktop version. All right. Why did it stay on the desktop version? Well, index, the server fired up this code. The server looked at these things. It grabbed the user agent. It looked to see if there was a match between whatever my user agent was, or my browser was, and one of these many different mobile browsers. There wasn't, right? Because I'm not on a mobile device. Therefore, this if statement was not true. Therefore, we did not do this statement, which redirects the user to the mobile page. We just continued happily down the way and outputted the regular desktop version HTML. All right. Let's open up the desktop or the uh, mobile emulator now. All right, I'm going to type in the same URL. But if you look, we landed
We landed on the mobile version. All right. So our home page, and we can actually put this on any number of pages, but we'll start out with the assumption that it's going to only be on the home page, works as sort of a traffic cop. And that traffic cop either says, hey, you're mobile, go to this page, or it lets you through on this current page. Logic is real straightforward here, nothing fancy. We do the same test that we were doing last week. The only difference is, is we'd redirect them to a mobile page. Questions? <coughs> say we have, a, well let's go in, let's go in, in the mobile version. I'm not going to play with style sheets yet. Um, And you have to decide if that's okay or not. Somebody really wants to do your mobile site for <laughs> Yeah. Just have to have at it. What do I care? <laughs> I'm going to get that line of code mobile. This viewport is just something that helps the initial sizing on a mobile device. Remember before when we initially brought it up it came up small. Here it will come up big the first time. All right. So, so far so good. All right. Let's say we have, you know, a header in our, or let's say we have a footer in our code. All right. That says copyright, what year is it? 2013, Mike Zeller's um, email mzellers at Lorraine CCC for more questions. All right, real simple footer. All right, so we go here. And I open up. the desktop version and put the footer in. Put the footer into one. 
And this certainly looks like the kind of thing that I would want to have probably regardless of whether I was on the desktop or the mobile. All right, so I'll put it in the index and I will put it also in the mobile. Already, this should be foreshadowing of what's to come because I had to do that twice. And I like doing things twice. Not really crazy about doing things once, but I mean, you got to do something, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, I'm not just going to pay you for, for nothing. So, all right. There's a little copyright information, and likewise, it shows up here, too. All right. Now, of course, the big thing comes in, what if I need to change that? And if I have to change it, I have to do it in two places. What will invariably happen if I have to do that in two places? I'm going to get it wrong sometime. Right? At some point, I'm going to get it wrong, and I am uh, going to change it in one and not change it in the other, and it's going to be inconsistent, and yada, 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 a nightmare. What's more... This is just assuming I just have one page for desktop and one page for mobile, right? I could very well have 100 pages for the desktop and a dozen for the mobile, let's say. And I'd want the same footer on each of them, and I'd want it to appear consistent. Well, with plain old HTML, we can't do that, right? With plain old HTML, we can put um, CSS in a separate file and have every page refer to it. And we can put JavaScript in a separate file and have every page to do to it. But unless we do something funny with our web server, I think you can do it, do something in Apache. Um, but straight out of the box, vanilla HTML, there's no way for us to put a block of code somewhere else and have the, the, the browser refer to it or have the, 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 the server refer to it. In PHP, though, you have what are called include files. And an include file can contain anything that could be on a PHP cut page. All right? So what's anything that could be on a PHP page? Well, anything that could be in an HTML document plus PHP code. So we could put PHP code in an include file. We could put HTML code in a file. We could, although it's less common, put CSS and JavaScript code in a PHP include file. The last two are pretty rare, right, because we already have external files for them. Typically, we just use that. So typically, um, <clears throat> PHP include files are um, where we're going to put chunks of PHP and or HTML that we want to reuse from page to page to page. Well, here's an example here, right? We want that footer to be the same between our desktop and mobile version, and also between all the different desktop pages and mobile pages. So we want the same footer on every page, desktop or mobile, all the pages in each of those two sets. So, and why do we want to do that? Well, that should be obvious, right? Because if we change something, we are going to have to change it in, in several places. A bunch of places as it stands now. So what we do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the code and I'm going to copy the footer, that section of code that's going to be common on every page. I'm going to copy that out. All right. I'm going to create a new file Save that. I'm going to paste that in there. This is a chunk of code that I want duplicated. Oops. Could be anything, right? I could have a chunk of JavaScript in here if I wanted to, or I could have a chunk of CSS, or I could have PHP. Right now, it's just going to consist of plain old HTML. And I'm going to save it as... 